and performance artist who has kept staying through antidepressants, Netflix, and her husband. She, di she is diagnosed with anxiety, depression, autism, IBS, and oh, good name. Bichette's disease. Bichette's disease. She's the proud mother of two listings. I often hear people describe anxiety as that feeling you get before a test, a presentation, or when it or I often hear people describe anxiety as the feeling you get before a test, a presentation, or when a roller coaster takes its first plunge. I call bull crap. While it does feel like falling, that moment is stretched out like an elastic band, building up tension until you feel like when it finally snaps, you'll be destroyed in the process. Your whole body might be blasted apart into a million pieces, or you'll lay crumpled in heap at a heap at the feet of its terrible bulk. Anxiety feels like claws have dug deep into the inside of your chest and ripping at your ribs, trying to escape, and it will take your lungs with it if it has to. And that's just the anxiety. We don't take into account the addition of depression into the mental illness soup. The two together create a Venn diagram from hell. This never-ending loop follows as such. You feel anxious about life, money, keeping up appearances, being your best self, passing as healthy, school, jobs, just living. You get so tired and anxious that you wish it would all just stop. You get depressed, feeling like your pain and exhaustion will never end. What's the point of living if this is what the next 5, 10, 30 years is going to be like? Down and down you spiral until you stop eating or you eat too much. You sleep for hours on end. And then when the anxiety-induced insomnia keeps you up until the sun is laughing at you with double FUs, work becomes a ball and chain because you have no mental capacity to care. The money problems begin to rise up over your ankles, your knees, and your hips, and soon you'll be struggling just to stay afloat. And the depression whispers, just stop trying. You've just drowned already. The anxiety says, there's so much to do, and the depression and its offer sounds so relaxing. And the, there's so much to do. What should I do? And how will I ever catch up? How will I get to the point where I can stand to be alive? And the depression says, stop swimming. Just rest. And anxiety is screaming to move and to run. And around and around and around it goes until you feel like stabbing yourself in the gut and hoping you don't survive. But hey, even if you do, at least you'll be in the hospital, and they'll take care of you for a week or two, and then you have to go home to bills and expectations and work and food and sleep and fear. In the pounding head and fuzzy, hearty, pounding heart, fuzzy headedness, when the world is spinning around you and you feel like you would be left behind in the planet's dust. Oh, and by you, of course, I mean me. Do yoga, they say. Self care, they say. Take deep breaths, they say. I've drunk myself into a coma on self-care, and when I'm brave enough to relax, I hear the voices of society and my elders saying, be productive, Jennifer. You're so talented, Jennifer. You'll change the world, Jennifer. Just try harder, Jennifer. You can't waste your talent, Jennifer. Talent doesn't pay rent. Talent doesn't make my pain and illness go away. Talent doesn't replace my antidepressants. Talent and promise and hope failed me when my world got so overwhelming that I had to fall behind and count my breath for fear of not having any. Talent doesn't cure my Venn diagram from hell. And I'm pissed that no one told me this when I was seven years old and wanted to kill myself because the thought of 60 plus years was like torture. I wish someone had told me that this world would want me whether or not, I was part of working society. I wish someone had told me that therapy was normal and necessary. I wish someone had asked if I was okay with not having any friends in elementary school. I wished someone would have questioned my need to skip recess and help my teachers grade papers. I wish someone had stopped to question why I was spinning around and around in circles and dominating the swing sets because it was the only way that I knew how to spin. I wish someone had given me the answer to my social frustrations, to my special interests, to my sensory issues. 
I wish that I had been doing diagnosed at five instead of 23. I wish I could have had my label held close to my heart and taught myself sooner how to be me. I wish I could have shouted into the universe who I was. I wish I was told to be kinder on myself because being autistic isn't a bad thing. My problems were not my fault. My anxieties and depressions came from me living in a world that wasn't made for me. This alien planet wasn't designed for me and mine. I will fight to build a space on this rock that's made for me and other di neurodivergents. I don't want to be an interstellar traveler on my world. I want to belong. I refuse to be a second class citizen because my fate was determined as a child. I will take what I can manage and I will take my anxieties, illnesses, and depression with each step I take into the wild exploration of life. I will live out of spite. And to this world I say, I'm here whether you like it or not.